Life on a sailboat has taken us to some amazing places over the years, but Malta is hands down one of the most unique. As we explore this small island in the middle of the Mediterranean, it feels like we are constantly surrounded by giant stone fortresses, and every alleyway looks like it came straight out of Game of Thrones. But something that I love about the sailing lifestyle is that rather than just getting to visit this incredible place, we get to call it home for a while. Okay, so welcome to our home for the next, I mean, maybe six months. This is Grand Harbor Marina. The capital of Malta is right next to us, but this part of town right here is Burgu, and it's a really cool part of town. Lots of super old buildings, lots of history, just a really beautiful area. Super lucked out today because Burgu is celebrating their annual festival of lights or their candlelight festival. So once a year, every year, they decorate the front of their houses and porches with these beautiful glass works and candles. And then tonight at 5.30, the whole Burgu lights up the candles and they turn off all the electricity and apparently it's just spectacularly beautiful. I think Malta in general is known for this limestone construction. So it's all got, you know, kind of a very earth tony, kind of a tan coloration. And so I think that the government here has mandated that if you're gonna build something, it has to have that color and that style, but they do let you use color on certain parts like on these like window structures and on the doors. And so it's really cool to see very monochromatic things going on with tiny little highlights of color. This is so pretty at night because the candles are just kind of flickering and lighting up all the houses and all the residents are super into it so a lot of them open up their doors and actually let you go through their house and just see all of their candles. Should I blow out all these? <laughs> Baby was kicking, I think she liked the, the music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Encore! <laughs> Good morning, pregnant lady. Good morning. How are you feeling today? Out of breath from coming up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> but feeling good. Yeah, today we're going to venture a little bit farther than the marina. We're heading over to Valletta, which is the capital city here. So I'm excited. Oso is definitely sensing that something is up. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to bring little man with us. So I gave him his food, so he's probably gonna be distracted for the next like 30 seconds. So let's get it. Time to go. <laughs> I think I'm officially embracing mom territory because I've been getting into wearing tennis shoes with a dress. It's really comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> now I just need like a visor and a whistle. Tommy, get back here! I don't know. You should say something weird like, yeah. Tommy, put the gun down! <laughs> <laughs> don't eat that squirrel! <laughs> okay, well I think this is where you're supposed to pick up the water, water taxis. Taxi. Maybe it's self-serve. Yeah, just get in there. I know how to start this. Yeah, totally, man. <laughs> I see a captain coming in. Thank Good morning. You. Good morning. What's your name? Manuel. Manuel Jordan. Jordan. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's the name of your boat? Hope. Hope. 
Hey, that's a good name, man. How old is your boat? 83 years old. 83, wow. wow. It's pretty from the boat, huh? Yeah, this is nice. Yeah. Thanks, man. Bye, bye. All right, so to actually get up into the walled city, we take this giant elevator, which is gonna be cool. This is so nuts, bud. Have you ever entered a city through, like, something so epic? It's fast. <laughs> We're high up now. That's so cool. I gotta look at the view. Ooh, I can't even lean over without freaking out. Yeah, oh wow. But I feel like we need to reassess our soundtrack on Atticus too. Yeah, you're into this the marching like, band? Yeah, putting a little pep in my step. <laughs> Feels like we're in Disneyland. I know. Does this mean we get cotton candy? <laughs> These are called pastizis, and I guess they're traditional Maltese pastry. This one is the most traditional. It's just ricotta and like fluff pastry. Mm -hmm. But then this one is chicken. What does it taste like? Danger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to get a tour of the Lacaris War Rooms underneath this giant stone structure, way underground. They've got tunnels. I guess that these tunnels were first used by the Knights of Malta, like hundreds of years ago, but they weren't very deep. And then during World War II, this was basically the area that was used for planning, preparing the invasion of Sicily by the Allies. Now the room as you see it, is how it was changed during the Cold War by NATO. Yeah, so our guide was saying that these tunnels have been taken over by various forces over the years. So first the Ottomans, then the Knights, then the British, then NATO took it over. And after NATO took it over, and abandoned this center as a headquarters or a secret headquarters, then squatters came and just lived in here. Can you imagine living under here and not seeing the light of day? And so I guess there were a lot of like homeless people down here and there's a lot of water seepage from up above. So by the time the historical society got their hands on these tunnels, they had a lot of restoration to do. What do you think of the cannon, buddy? That was more intense, just being so close to it. <laughs> I felt it in, in my belly, in my legs. Yeah. And I was sitting directly behind it, so I was hoping the guy had done it correctly. Yeah. <laughs> well, now I know what that noise is, because the funny thing is they actually point the cannon directly at Burgoo, where the boat is. And every day I'm like, is there some crazy construction going on or something? Now I understand. So we stopped for lunch and down a couple kind of side streets, we found this Chinese restaurant and it is insanely good. Traditional Maltese Chinese food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what did we get, bud? The translation was just warm noodles. Mm -hmm. Chicken warm noodles and then homemade beef dumplings. And the place is very small. There's enough room for one table outside, two tables inside and then the kitchen. It's an actual hole in the wall. This is the best meal I've had in a long time. <laughs> okay, buddy, finish up that orange, because we're going inside St. John's Cathedral. 
<laughs> I'm joking, buddy. That's how you know it's a good. I think I just peed my pants. <laughs> yeah. Keep it together, buddy. Okay. We're about to go into a, to a sacred place. <laughs> Retake. Okay, so apparently I've got to put this shawl on to protect my indecent shoulders. I don't want to arouse anyone by these babies. Buddy, put those on. to our audio guide and uh, apparently every single one of these marble paintings or murals is actually a tombstone from an individual knight. So each one tells a story of that knight's accomplishments or successes. One thing that this church is really known for is it's one of the best examples of high Baroque style which from the little bit that I've learned about Baroque, Europe went from being kind of having really subtle low key art to very flashy kind of gaudy art. And so you can see that's why everything is super gold, super flashy, super in your face. Every time they wanted to do anything, they were like, I know, let's make a bird. They're like, let's not make a bird. Let's make 20 gold birds all right next to each other. Maybe that's why they called it Baroque because if you wanted to make Baroque art, it would make you Baroque. Do you like that, buddy? Oh, that's really <laughs> Personally, I don't really get the naked baby symbolism in a lot of religious art. I think those are um, cherubs. Yeah, what's up with the cherubs, though? It's like they're just laying out. It's <laughs> art. <laughs> buddy, now that you did that, it's all I can think of looking around. Like, you just be like... I do want to say, all joking aside, it is an extremely beautiful church. And uh, something that's really cool is St. John the Baptist is the patron saint here. And the story of John the Baptist's life is actually painted on the ceiling. So you can go all the way down the ceiling and it depicts different phases of the story of his life. So now this church, as well as most of Valletta and most of the large, beautiful buildings that we've seen here, were built by the Knights of Malta when they were in charge of Malta. And they were like an international organization way back in the day. Each of these chapels belongs to a different nationality. So like the Spanish had their own chapel, the Germans had their own, the Italians had their own. So each chapel has its own kind of flair, its own kind of vibe, and tells its own cultural stories. Pretty incredible, huh? Yeah. I really like this painter because he uses light in this really beautiful way. And also, his paintings aren't just cherubs and clouds and angels. It's like they're real people with a lot of suffering and emotion in their face. They kind of look like snapshots of a moment in time, you know, and there's so much emotion in it. The painter that painted most of these paintings, his name is Caravaggio, uh -huh. and he's like a really famous painter, and this is his most famous work, and it's depicting the beheading of John the Baptist or St. John. And yeah, it's hauntingly beautiful. So we are on to our pastries round two. We were walking along and saw this really beautiful cafe. I mean, I'm not kidding. This has got to be one of the most beautiful cafes I've ever seen in my life. We got two traditional Maltese pastries. It's like gingerbread. It's not too sweet, but really nice. Wow, look at that. That's a lot of detail <laughs> in the arrangement, you know? Whoa, that's so good. Mm, feel very gluttonous right now. Nice bell, bud. It's a big bell. I guess they ring it in commemoration of those who died during the siege of Malta. The statue. Someone laying down on pillows, I like that. Is that what your statue would be? If anyone made yeah, a statue of you? Yeah, a popcorn and also Commemorating the laziest woman mm. on the planet. <laughs> mm. Pretty day. You wanna head back home? 
Yep. You ready? Yeah, I miss Ozone. You gotta take little buddy for a walk. A long walk. <laughs> it's been a long day. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet home, buddy. It is nice to be home. It feels like home already, doesn't it? Yeah, especially after a day in the city. Burgoo feels a lot quieter, a lot calmer. And I'm I'm happy this is where we live. <laughs> Why are you in such a rush there, buddy? Pregnant lady's gotta pee for probably the twelfth time today. And that's not an exaggeration. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Hello. I missed you. Hey, buddy. How's the wiggle butt, huh? Oh, are you happy to see us? You ready? <laughs> you ready to go for a walk? Oh, so sit. Good boy. Okay, you're free. So we found this walk just about right when we got here and it's really awesome because it's the only place around here that we can take Oso off leash and let him kind of roam and it's really, really pretty. Mm -hmm. 